Let's see. Uh, of course, I was very young. I was probably 19 when I made the decision. And uh, I was always very interested in difficult puzzles and games, especially chess. And there is that uh, intricate aspect to philosophy that attracted me. Um, but I was also very interested in human behavior, even as a, a young person. And the first course in philosophy that really sucked me in was a course in ancient philosophy. Uh, and so I read uh, Plato and Aristotle, and I had never read anything like that. In high school, uh, I went to a Catholic school. I was a football player, and I just tried to scrape by. <laughs> Uh, but college I found incredibly exciting. Um, so I think it was that, you know, Plato and Aristotle had these views about everything, the universe, how we fit into it, what motivates us, why we do what we do. Uh, and that's what, uh, that's what sucked me in. And I think I was 19. I think I was a sophomore when I decided. Oh, well, uh, definitely Aristotle. I wrote my dissertation on uh, Aristotle's theory of human motivation. Uh, so it's a, you know, a theory about why we do what we do, really. And um, eventually, I moved away from ancient philosophy. I started you know, reading classical Greek and writing commentaries on Aristotle. That's what Aristotle scholars do. And I did that for four or five years after my dissertation. But uh, the issues that he addressed uh, were the things that really interested me. And so eventually, I had ideas of my own about this. And I started writing too many books and too many articles. I think the, the thing that really hooked me on Aristotle was his view about what's called weakness of will. And uh, weakness of will is something that shows up when you judge that on the whole it would be best to do a certain thing, um, but you don't do it, and you freely don't do it. Uh, so an example I use for students is uh, they judge tonight that on the whole it would be best to stay in and study, and better to do that than to go to a party and they've been invited to a party. Uh, but the time for the party comes closer, a friend comes by with a 12-pack, say, and says, uh, let's go. <laughs> and uh, the student thinks, yeah, I'm going to do it. I shouldn't, but I'll do it. Um, and Aristotle had a, a view about why this happens, but it wasn't a very developed view. Uh, and I thought, well, there's got to be a better answer than that. It really doesn't matter for now what his answer was. And so I started, you know, reading a lot of social psychology, uh, motivational psychology, and that sort of thing, and just sit, uh, thinking things through. Um, and I, I came up with a view of my own that's empirically well supported, I think. And this is what most of my first book, Irrationality, was about, this kind of behavior. So one way to think about what's going on is we want things, and then the things we want have two different features. Uh, there's the pull, how strongly they pull us, but there's also our ranking or assessment on some kind of value scale of how good or bad they are. Um, and so the student is ranking studying uh, higher than going to the party because he can see the long-term benefits of uh, studying and um, also, you know, the, the possible costs of not. Um, but the party, for obvious reasons, has a greater motivational pull on him. It's more attractive. And so if he doesn't do anything about it, what's going to happen is he's going to be pulled to the party uh, against his better judgment. It's not all that complicated. Um, and behavior like this is intentional uh, and I think free, too. Mm -hmm.